expecting any gain. For, from my perspective, if you expect pain, if you expect no pain in a business, in a marriage, if you expect no pain, you will just get married in vain. I love this last verse of the wisest man, at least the wise man Solomon, or the philosopher Solomon. I love the last verse. He said, um, a rope that is made of three cords is hard to break. Now, common sense alone should tell us that if we have a family, if we start a family, or if we have a family, a marriage, an institution, a business, an establishment, you call it, same thing, with more than two people that are either bringing in income or contributing to the unit, to the whole, equally in their respective roles, common sense alone should tell us that that family unit will be much more stronger in almost every respect or every aspect. That business, that family unit will, all, will be much stronger than, than just two or one. For example, it will be much more stronger financially, um, organizationally, strategically, Commercially, you name, you name it, it will be far more stronger. The reason why most people, and primarily um, poor people, and especially those who call themselves black people, black Christians and black churches, etc. The reason why they cannot think of this fact or even entertain the possibility of polygamy which means, polygamy means a man marrying more than one woman, or polyandry, which means a woman marrying more than one man to start a family and to build a family, to build a business. The reason why they can't entertain this is because of ignorance and religion, and because they don't know and cannot even begin to understand that marriage is a business, marriage is a company, a corporation, an organization, an institution, an establishment in which each partner plays his or her role in making the company or corporation work, in making it play his or her role in making it stronger and far more successful. In fact, even animals, some animals in the, in the wilds, in nature, figure that out and we call these animals dumb. They figure out that long time. They group together and, you know, they have become far more stronger. Just watch some of these um, National Geographic and wildlife, um, you know, some of these wildlife or nature or whatever on, on television or, or just some, even on the internet and YouTube. You'll see that. What most people don't know and the truth that they are unwilling to accept, especially some Christian pastors and religious zealots and traditionalists, conservatives, fundamentalists, and proponents of what is called traditional marriage, marriage that involves one man and one woman, or one woman and to, to one man, a couple that is brought together and fused together by the thing they call love, what these people are failing to understand is that broke pocket love does not always last till natural death do they part. From my perspective, the stress or the stresses and uncertainties alone that are brought about by broke pocket love is far more likely to lead to untimely and premature death. Most couples get into marriage or get married because of so-called love, um, because of 
a religious love, head over heels love, high school sweetheart love, so-called love based on how famous, how educated, and how well liked the spouse is, um, how funny he or, he or she is, how young, handsome, and beautiful your partner look, how much great potential they have for the future. And above all, some spouse get married or get into marriage based on how passionate they make love to each other when they have sex. Those who get into this serious business of marriage for any of uh, or any or all of these reasons from my perspective, those who get into the serious business of marriage for any or all of these um, reasons alone are, from my perspective, riding for a terrible fall. It's not a matter of if they will fall, it's just when they fall. The fact is that those, what I've just mentioned, are not elements that you should start to build your um, business with. They are not elements or asset that you should start to build your business and any business, I might add. And, and especially if or when you know and understand that marriage is a very, very serious business. For to do so is to only prove that you were born to be dumb and stupid. For all of those assets or all of those elements will depreciate in value over time. You will wake up one morning and the wife isn't as isn't 20 years old anymore. The husband isn't that charming, handsome, big muscle um, guy in his 20s or 30s or whatever anymore. So those values will change. Nature can be, you know, nature can be can be seen sometimes by most people who keep looking in the mirror as being sometimes unkind. So regardless of all the Botox and all the makeup you may want to do, the fact is, you know, nature is working. So if you build your asset on all of these things, how handsome, that love-making thing, look at me, I can't function like a 19, 20-year-old anymore unless I'm fooling somebody and trying something else. The bottom line is, it's just that. Right? So nature will replace your youth and those vegan energy, but hopefully let it replace it with wisdom. So, if you build your, um, your business, your marriage, and those assets, the fact is that it won't work. For all of those assets or elements will depreciate over time, and no pastors, no pastors prior, or no spiritual or religious counseling, whether you pay for it, whether you have to pay your pastor or whether you offer it to you for free, will ever be able to restore their values, those values, or restore those elements that I've mentioned before, values, and make them marketable as brand new. That's why counseling don't work in a lot of these um, relationships. Going to your pastor and praying and fasting when you're, you're not operating your marriage like a business won't work. That's a fact. Your pastor won't tell you that because he wants you to keep coming every Sunday. From my perspective, the church, if at all in need to be church, should be like a hospital. You only go there when you're sick. Once you're healed, you don't belong to be going back to the hospital every more to see the, the doctor or the pastor. You should go. Jesus himself, from what I've read in the Bible, he didn't ask people to keep following him. He said, go sin no more. Go, go and get sick anymore. You learn now, move on. Your sins are forgiven. Go along and live your life and fix things. Anyhow, not to stray from this presentation. I'm not a preacher. At least not anymore. But, so, as I said, those things will fail and your pastor cannot bring them back and make them marketable through prayers or any miracles anymore. They themselves are aging and fading. So don't be deceived. But we'll talk more about that at another time and another place, hopefully. For now, this is the end of part two of this presentation. Please join me in part three. 
for the continuation as I delve deeper into the meanings and definitions of the words marriage and institution. See you shortly.